Hello everyone, my name is Toby Horrorboy. Let's make a Venom Nightlight. So this was a birthday present for my friend Joey and I started it nine days before their birthday. To complicate things, I really wanted this to be a surprise and we do live together. So my friend Joey loves Venom and I have had this Spider-Man Nightlight for years and I've never taken it out of the box. I did not want it, I had no use for it, so let's repurpose it. When I'm starting a project like this, the first thing I like to do is to take off all the bits that aren't going to be in the finished product. And for Spidey here, that means his eyes and the mouth area. But I'm so sure that if I just went blindly cutting into it, I would snip some wires. So first, we have to open him up. This nightlight has two brightness settings. The dimmer setting activates just the LEDs in his eyes, and the brighter setting does that big circular light in the back there as well. Because the eye lights are attached to the eye pieces, the first thing we're going to do is rip those out. I used a pair of pliers to break the support pegs from the inside, and that made the outer eye pieces super easy to remove. With those out of the way, we can draw on Venom's eye shape. I took most of my references for this from the Venom movie, but some from the comics as well. And even within each movie, Venom's design isn't really all that consistent. Which is fair enough, he is a symbiote. So it's fine if it's not accurate, I'm sure it's accurate to some frame somewhere. Once we're happy with the eye shape, we can start cutting it out. I chose to use a hot knife here, which melted the plastic rather than cutting it, but it melted through it. And you get this really like gnarly, half melted look around the edges, which would be terrible if I was making Spider-Man, but looks great for Venom. Also, if you are making one of these or using any power tools for anything else, you have to wear the right PPE. If you're using a hot knife, you have to be in a well-ventilated area and you need to be wearing a respirator. I cannot stress how important this is, it can make you so sick otherwise. And no one wants that, so safety first. I keep flipping this piece around to see the other side, just to make sure that the wires haven't shifted, I'm not anywhere near them. I haven't cut any wires on a project before and I am not starting now. And what's a nightlight that doesn't light up? Now that both of our eyes are cut out, we don't even need to worry about the wires anymore. They're only attached to the back piece and we won't be using them for a while. To finish up with our eye holes, I'm just going in from the back and melting the plastic forward. A little bit later on, we are going to have to glue in new eye pieces. And that's going to be much easier if the back of the eyes is a mostly flat surface. And pushing all that plastic gunk forward where you can see it is going to help it look a little bit grosser as well. And there they are. It turned out way better than I was expecting. So we're off to a good start. And now we're going to do the same thing for his mouth. Again, Venom's mouth does look different in every shot, but I think it looks the coolest when it goes up to the top of his eyes. So that is exactly what I wanted to do here. And it was somewhere around here where Joey just straight up walked into the room and they were like, hey, can you smell burning plastic? And I was like, yeah, don't worry, that's just me. I'm uh, making Five Nights at Freddy's. I was like, yep, I'm just cutting out the these lights for Five Nights at Freddy's purposes. Don't worry about it. And I just hoped that they would buy it, and they did. They believed me. The secret birthday present remained a secret. One of these days, I am going to add lights to an animatronic's eyes, but not from this. This Spider-Man nightlight had a greater purpose. The tricky bit here is that the very sides of the mouth were really close to the edge of the mask. I had to be really careful that it didn't melt all the way through, and I had to be really gentle when handling the plastic there because it's so thin that it could just snap. Thankfully, nothing broke. And then like what we did with the eyes, I smoothed down the back of the mouth. There he is, and look at that gorgeous smile. Now that we've cut all of that out, we can move on to the next step. We need to fill in the grooves on his face. These lines aren't just painted on, they are depressed slightly into the face. Which means that if we just go in and paint it, they will be 100% visible. And Venom doesn't have those, so I'm just taking some sandpaper and roughing up the whole surface of the mask. It's much easier for glues and paints to stick to something if it's not totally smooth plastic. There are a lot of different ways that you could do this next bit, and I guess all of it, but I used the ultralight foam clay from Lumen's Workshop. I've actually never used this before, but I've heard nothing but good things. It's a really cool product, I can't wait to use it on like a cosplay or something. So what I'm basically doing here is just taking really thin, long bits and just kind of smooshing it into the crevices just to get it as flat and smooth to the rest of the surface as possible. This actually had a 48 hour drying time and I didn't have 48 hours, so I think I waited for like 36, which wasn't great of me, um, but I really needed to get this done and I, I had no time to delay. Once the foam clay was almost definitely, probably mostly dry, I sanded it down. And now that we've got a mostly flat surface, I went outside and used Plasti Dip to prime it. 
I was very much crunching to get this done at this point. Um, I didn't have a lot of time left and I couldn't film this at all. Plastidip is an aerosol primer, so it's kind of like a spray paint, but it's plastic. It is a fantastic, fantastic product and I filmed none of it because I did it outside in the dark while it was raining just a little bit. So I have no footage of that. Plasti Dip takes four hours to fully dry before you can use it, so I decided to use that time to jump over and start making the teeth. On animatronic projects, I'd usually just make the teeth out of foam, but as it turns out, Joey is currently working on a Venom cosplay and had bought maybe 10 times the amount of material that they needed for his teeth. So I asked if I could use some of it. I didn't specify what it was for and they basically just said, yes, please take it, I have way too much. So this material that I made the teeth out of is called Polymorph. They're small thermoplastic beads, so you can heat them up by dipping them into boiling water and then you can mold them until you're happy with the shape. When it cools down, it goes white and becomes a hard plastic. It's very tough, it's a fantastic material, and if you don't like the shape of something, you can just heat it up again and use it as many times as you need. And cosplayers, yes, it is mouth safe. You can absolutely mold this to your teeth and make fangs out of it. It's great for that. I ended up making just over 50 teeth. It took way less time than I was expecting. Thank you, Joey, for the polymorph. Jumping back to the face of the nightlight, you can see that I didn't manage to get it perfectly smooth. Which is okay, Venom's face isn't perfectly smooth, and I did manage to cover up most of those lines. Going in completely the opposite direction, I'm gonna give his face some texture by using hot glue. I tried to do like kind of squiggly, messy lines, mostly following along the lines that were already there to help disguise those a little bit more. I didn't want them to look too uniform, so I just tried to stagger them over his face and make them different lengths. Then I applied a coat of Mod Podge over the whole thing, and that will help paint stick to our hot glue a little bit later. And now we can go and finish up those teeth. I used the hot knife to carve mostly vertical grooves into each tooth, just to give it some texture and help it look a little bit less cartoony. I usually do this with foam teeth and it kind of melts the foam away and leaves like a groove. But because this is a thermoplastic, it didn't really do that. Instead, when it cut into the tooth, it kind of bubbled up around it, which wasn't really the look that I was going for, but it does kind of look cool in its own right. Adding texture to things with the hot knife is just one of my favorite things to do at the moment. It always looks so cool. And now that that's done, we can start painting the teeth. The first thing I did was lay down a very light yellow coat of paint. If you've watched my videos before, the name Joey might sound familiar to you because they are my awesome housemate Joey, who is really good at painting and mixing paints and doing all this stuff with colors. So whenever I'm struggling to mix a paint color, which is every time I mix a paint color, I would ask Joey for help and they would just be able to do it in like a second. It is incredible, but I couldn't ask them for help with this. I had to do all my paint mixing on my own, so if it doesn't look very good, that's why. <laughs> Next, I took a slightly darker yellow and dry brushed it onto most of the tooth. I tried to use a few different colors to give it some dimension and also to make it look just a little bit gross. Basically, I just didn't want his teeth to be just plain white. Also, human teeth aren't plain white. In most reference photos I had, his teeth did look a bit darker towards the gums. So I painted that on next and tried to lightly brush it down the tooth a little bit. The final color I did was white. I put white paint in the grooves of each tooth to highlight them. And I really wasn't happy with how dark the teeth looked, so I very lightly dry brushed white paint over the entirety of each tooth. I then wiped off the majority of the white paint with a paper towel, and I am much happier with how they looked after this step. The last thing we're going to do with the teeth for now is to flatten the backs of them. I'm doing this by just sanding it down with a Dremel, but I guess the friction is heating it up a bit because you can just kind of like pull off the excess. It'll be way easier to glue the teeth on if the backs of them are flat. Moving back to the main part of his face, I'm just going to do a coat of black paint over the whole thing. There were some places where the Plasti Dip didn't reach that were still like very visibly red, so it was really important to get into all of those crevices. And now it's finally time to look at his eyes. To get the pattern for his eyes, I put a piece of paper in flush against the eye socket and just traced out the shape. Making the eyes was a little bit tricky because while I would normally use foam, I couldn't do that here. I had to find either white or clear plastic that I could paint white because a lot of materials, including foam, won't let the light through and then it wouldn't light up and we don't want that. So I cut both eyes out of the sheet of plastic and then sanded them down so that the paint and glue will stick better. I used a heat gun to heat form the plastic a little bit because Venom's face is curved, the eyes also curve with it. 
and it was going to be easier to glue the eyes in if they matched the curve of the face. The heat forming kind of worked, there was definitely a difference, but it wasn't nearly as good as it could have been. Ideally I would have used like a transparent thermoplastic sheet, but unfortunately I didn't have any laying around and there was no way I could get some in time. I pretty frequently cut things out just too big because I'm worried that they won't fit, so I did that with the eyepieces, so I cut those down now. You know, so they'll actually fit where they're meant to go. I also cut a few triangles out of the shape, with the hope that they'll let the plastic bend a little bit easier. And I'm drawing an outline of where our piece is going to go here so I know where to put the glue later. And you can see here that even with the eye being held in place, you can still see some red when looking in from the side. So I'm just going to take some black paint and fill in anything that I've missed. I tried to use regular acrylic paint on the eyes but it didn't look very good so I ended up using spray paint instead. And then I dremeled off the paint around the edges so that the glue would have a clean surface to stick to. So this is called contact adhesive or contact adhesive gel. It is by far my favourite type of adhesive. Basically you put a thin coat on both pieces that you want to glue, wait for it to get touch dry and then put your pieces together and they will never come apart. It is fantastic, I use it all of the time. So I just glued in both of the eye pieces. Some parts of the eyes didn't have a lot of surface area being glued down, so I just added in a couple of little foam support tabs, which is just a piece of craft foam that I've stuck down over the headpiece and the eyepiece just so it has a little bit more support. The first thing I'm going to do for his mouth is to make the very side pieces. It's kind of hard to see and it does change a fair bit, but he has these like dinosaur side mouth bits. I do not know what the technical term is. They look like they've got a different texture to the rest of his mouth, so I'm doing them separately. So I cut four rectangles out of one millimeter thick craft foam and then use the contact cement to glue them together. I needed it to be a little bit thicker because now I'm going to use the hot knife to carve in his grooves. This is a pretty small detail and I really wanted them to stand out so I tried to make them like pretty thick. The foam looked a little bit flat so I just kind of went in with the hot knife to rough it up a little bit to make it look a little bit more like flesh. Inner mouth flesh. Kind of gross. I sealed the foam with Mod Podge and then painted it pink. I actually really like the original colour of the foam, but I didn't want to just leave it unpainted. I then used the Mr. Hobby Mr. Weathering colour in black as a wash to get into all of the crevices and bring out the details. I put it on the whole thing and then used a paper towel to dab up the topmost area. And that darkens all of the lower points and makes them stand out. I wasn't really happy with how the eyes looked, they were just really like flat and sad looking. Totally lacking detail, they really didn't look good, especially with how everything else is like nice and textured. So I bought some pearlescent paint and did a few coats of that on top. You can't really tell in the video, but it looks so much better in person. And it looks a lot closer to how Venom looks in the movies. I'm still not done with the eyes, but for now we're going to move back to the mouth. We can now cut down our mouth pieces and glue them in with our contact cement. With that glued in, we can start on the main part of his mouth. I patterned this by doing the same thing I did with his eyes. We're going to make this out of a much thicker foam because it needs to be able to support the teeth. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I then trimmed it down a bit because it was sticking up behind his eyes. Then we use a heat gun to heat form it to the right shape. And then we can prime it with a few coats of Mod Podge and then paint it dark red. While we're waiting for the paint to dry, let's go and make the tongue. So I drew out like a bit of a squiggly shape to be the pattern. I wanted it to be pretty thick at the base, so we're going to cut it out of an EVA foam floor mat. And then we can use a Dremel to sand it into shape. These floor mats are textured on one side, which is kind of annoying. But we are sanding this all of the way down so that it is thinner at the end. And of course thinner on the sides. Whenever I'm dremeling something to a really thin edge, I like to take a pair of thread clippers along the edges just to clean up any little messy bits. A really great method for texturing foam is to heat it up using a heat gun and then take tin foil and kind of stamp it into it. I tried doing that here and while I do normally like how that looks, it wasn't enough for the tongue. So it was time to pull out the hot knife. I really wasn't sure what I was doing with this, I did some lines and some other marks and then I did a bunch of holes. And the holes looked better than anything else, so then I just kept doing them. Are they meant to be taste buds? Who's to say? But I just kept going and adding more until I was happy with how it looked. I also did a few along the edges so that it wasn't just the top and the bottom of the tongue that were textured. Once I was happy with how it looked, I did a few coats of Mod Podge to seal it and put it aside for now. And at this point, he is so close to done. And it was so close to Joey's birthday. So I glued his mouth backing in with contact cement. And now it is finally time to glue in his teeth. It took about 40 minutes to glue on all of Venom's teeth, and I wasn't really sure what I was doing or how far to space them apart, but I had to put some shorter teeth at the center front so that his tongue could poke out the middle. 
I ended up adjusting the placement for a few of the teeth because I just wasn't happy with how they were sitting. And I even ended up cutting some shorter with the scissors because they were just too long for the spot that they had to go into. I know the way that those front teeth are sitting at the moment looks a little bit silly now, but it looks less weird once the tongue is in, which you will see in just a minute. I put the teeth all over the dark red part of the mouth, and as I was gluing the teeth further up the sides, I was being really careful with how I was facing them because I wanted to glue a tooth over the seam between the red and pink parts of the mouth. Like I could disguise the seam, or I could just stick a tooth over it. And as I've learned from all the stuff that I've made, more teeth is usually the answer. Once our teeth are glued in, it's time to paint the tongue. I started off with the same pink that I used for the upper mouth bits, but it was very flat looking. So to add some dimension, I took the white pearlescent paint that I used for his eyes and painted that on really thickly because I wanted it to get into all of the little crevices. I still wanted the pink to be very visible, so I took a paper towel and wiped off a lot of the white. The color didn't look quite fleshy enough, so I decided to add some red. I did a red wash over the whole thing, and that is just a little bit of red paint and a little bit of water mixed together. This next part was probably the most annoying part of the whole project, and thankfully you guys don't have to sit through it, only I did. If you remember back at the beginning of the video, I cut the eyes out, and because because Venom's eyes are so much bigger than Spider-Man's, that piece just wasn't going to fit there anymore. I was actually thinking of extending the silver pieces that help guide the light, but that would have been extremely difficult, so I just cut them all of the way down. And then I spent a really long time trying to get the lights into a good position. I ended up gluing each light to a piece of foam, and I cut the foam on an angle so that it would point the light in the right direction. And I just kept putting his face back on and turning it on and seeing what it looked like, and trying to get it as even as possible. The light isn't as concentrated because I removed the silver bits and because it has further to travel, but I think it still looks pretty good. Once we've glued the lights down, it's time to glue in the tongue. Apparently I didn't film it, but I finished up his eyes as well. I wanted to add a little bit more dimension, so I used that wash from earlier in black and I just went around the edges and kind of smudged it out. The absolute final touch for this project was to gloss coat the whole thing so that he'd be nice and shiny, but I didn't film that, so... Here's the finished product. For anyone wondering, Joey had no idea that I was making this, and they did a bit of a like, you lied to me about the Spider-Man light, it wasn't for Five Nights at Freddy's at all. They really loved this, which makes me so, so, so happy. All in all, present success. Thank you guys so much for watching. Also, I customized that Huggy Wuggy animatronic and I haven't made the video for him yet because I was very busy doing this, but I'm gonna do that next. And then it's time to make Fetch from Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, thanks for watching, have a good day, bye.